Welcome to Smack Up. Smack Whoa. Up. March 10th, 2006. We're in it, boys. We just recorded March 3rd, like five seconds ago, obviously. No, we right? didn't. No, that was last week. That was, that last, was last week. week. That was last week. Yeah. That was a week ago. Where have I been? Where the portal, around? dude. You guys sent in. I've just been so excited that we have merch now that I've just been out of it for a week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have merch now. Link guys, so in on. the bio. Go link check it out. Link in the bio, link in the SoundCloud, link in the YouTube. Check it out. Yeah, Redbubble.com slash letter Christmas time, U half Christmas time number is two. Coming up. Wear this. Buy yourself a smack up clock for your loved ones. Holiday is approaching. Bye. You know, the, the, the autumnal solstice just passed us, guys. Oh it's God. time to set the clocks back. They passed away? Yep. Holy Rip. shit. Man. Welcome to the Phantom Hour of Smack Up. <laughs> Undertaker no. passed? Did we get the news? Dude, he's been dead. Oh, oh shit. The rumors? Cool. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> oh, shit. We're in fucking Mobile, Alabama today. Mobile, Alabama. And gotta... where are we next week? I don't know. We haven't, we haven't that's, that's, next, that's next week's problem. That's next you, week's you guys event. don't know where we are next week? No. I haven't said it. Dumbass. It's All Saturday right, night's guys. main event. All right. No, no, because it's next week SmackDown. Yeah, we have and SmackDown then the day before, after before Cubble, will be yeah. Saturday night's main event. Yeah, we're not we're not ready for that yet. We have a Friday before. Saturday. Oh shit! I just realized where they're going to be next week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where are they next week, Tyler? Do you know? Is it in Chicago? No. Is it in? This is not know. related to the Converse. Oh, I don't know. Let me check. I'll, I'll let you look that up, pal. Fine. This, all get, this all get cut out. No, it's not. You can you can whittle it down and, and use it. The yeah, Louisiana. Exactly. No. Saturday night's main event. Oh, Kobo. Yeah, I know yeah. Kobo. Yeah, yeah. But I thought we were talking about SmackDown. <laughs> no. They're gonna go anyway. all the way to Louisiana just to fucking go all the way out to Detroit. It's crazy. The next day. Wow. Typical Raw and SmackDown. Story. Bro, yesterday, all everybody they were in Australia. They oh, went yeah. to Australia. We'll get they, there they later, buddy. The... We'll get there later. It's in the episode. Yeah, about... Here's what happens. Huh? Undertaker, Kurt Angle, promo package, recapping everything that's pretty much happened up to this point. Yep. Then, yep. And then Mark Henry. And then Mark Henry. And Mark Henry uh, is also heavy breathing that's dubbed in. Let's <laughs> yeah. go. We come back, opening a SmackDown. <laughs> Mark Henry is approaching the ring. And threatens Kurt Angle that he should come out here, or he's gonna get his belt took. Okay. And, and he's so strong. Mark Mark looks so good. Well, hold on. I got something that Davari says. He he gets on the mic and says, "There is one man, one man, one man, one man, one man," and that's it. That's all he kept saying. He just kept saying, "He's one so man. good." Uh, a... He says Batista forgot about Mark Henry. I don't know about that. Until he hurt him so bad, he had to give up the title. Yep. And then, then it was him. Forget. And then he said That's the Undertaker you are forgot in. about Mark Henry. And then he took the title shot away from him. Kurt Angle no, Kurt forgot Angle about scared. Him. Yeah, Kurt Angle forgot about Henry. Because he wouldn't have the title without Mark Henry. <clears throat> he does whatever he wants to whoever he wants. But what if it was him in that situation? So he said you can either hand it over or get it took. Mm-hmm. So what if it was him? What if it was him who got it took? And he said, Angle, get your booty out here. And then Angle, and he Angle comes out saying, I'm ready right now, pal. Mm -hmm. Let's go. And they go. That that dastardly legend killer, Randy Orton, Well, that's comes his best friend, and... yeah. Mark Henry's best friend, yeah. Randy Orton. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Known associate. Randy, Orton, Randy Orton's invited to the cookout, as we've said. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. And then, then Ray Mysterio comes out, and he's like, I'm going to save... Uh, ow, 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 ow. And Henry yeah, just crushes exactly. Ray. Right yeah. <clears throat> and then Mark Angle Henry has a chair. <laughs> so before he can employ the, the services of that chair, Teddy Long comes out. Hold on, player. Holla, Pass holla. That white boy over here, he says to Randy Orton. He says... This is so real. Teddy says he doesn't want to fine or suspend anyone. Just a couple weeks before Wrestlemania so instead what's gonna happen we're gonna get for tonight's main event Mark Henry and Randy Orton versus Kurt Angle and Rey Mysterio whoa wow 
I would not have seen that coming a thousand miles away. So there's no way. So many times already. I, can they like coexist? Me, guy like me, I would do Kurt Angle and Mark Henry versus Randy Orton and Rey Mysterio. But I'm, I'm a different type of, you know, mentally insane man. Okay, Tony Khan, calm down. Put the match on now. I want the heels on the same team. Just kidding. I want both of them on the same team versus the other team right now. Next week at the promo pay-per-view pre-show. I have a big announcement next week. Buy tickets now. <laughs> the announcement is that these two do not like each other. There's also a line from Taz here. He calls Mark Henry a bohemoth. <laughs> I don't know what that means. He I'm has with away with words. <laughs> it's very, very elegant. Guys, we got the Money in the Bank coming up later. at WrestleMania. Three Raw superstars Ooh. and three SmackDown superstars. They already got all the sort of the Raw superstars. Yeah, three announced. Big dumbasses or three of the great. Well, all now hold on. I I know I know my history and all of that, but I wouldn't count out Shelton Benjamin or Rob Van Dam in a ladder match. Ric Flair. I, I mean, he was well, part of one of the best matches of the year. Raw. Yeah. Will Mama of the year. One of the best ladder matches of all time. So if Mama saying. Benjamin is there, that is a force multiplier in Thank favor of Shelton. So I have some bad news for you, Joe. I don't think Mama Benjamin's making it to Mania. I think oh. the Mama Benjamin big gets no! cut short. No! Fuck the Fed! Fuck the Fed! Fucking bullshit. Tony Khan, you know what to do. Tony it's time Tony to Khan. sign the Mama Benjamin to Tony a Khan comes contract. out to the ring and he says, I want Bobby Lashley versus Finley in a Money in the Bank qualifying match right now. And so that's what we yep. get. That's Kinda. not what we get. Oh, we don't get that. No, no. no. Finley no. just uh, says, fuck it. Fuck it, dog. I'm going to start smacking him with a shillelagh. He pushes yeah. the ref over. He says, uh, fuck it. We ball. And then they just start beating the shit out of each other. Like This is just a better version of what happened last week. Yeah, they, they didn't start the match. No, <laughs> no it didn't Didn't even get into it. They they keep fighting each other. Ten, the, the DPW locker room shows up again to stop no, it. I, I need to go back and edit the picture of Braun Strowman flipping over the, the truck with uh, the, the spirit of Undertaker, Undertaker the ghost of the giant baby. <laughs> and then also add in the ghost of uh, Bobby, Lashley now. Bobby Lashley slams Finley's face into the car over and over and over and over and over, and then he pushes him over, and he's like, and I'm going to fucking kill him. <laughs> and before this, Finley, instead of using the shillelagh he picks up a fucking metal pipe, pipe the pipe the oh my god the shillelagh just wasn't strong enough he bad was... poor writer's car yeah showed up to do his job and now his car is totaled r.i.p to that 1993 uh toyota corolla he deserved it you know how much fucking miles were on that car probably like two hundred thousand miles were on that car. oh yeah it could have gone for another fucking six i believe oh, it for sure they don't build Toyota Corollas like that no more. Y'all, Zoomers, any Zoomers watching this right now, you don't know about them, like old Toyotas. Those boys were built to explode in a, in a cave underground. Those boys were built to be driven in the Middle East uh, with machine guns strapped to them. That's right. They didn't even know that was going to happen to them, but they built them for it. <laughs> we're about to get Those reality checked, Japanese. dude. We're about to get our fucking reality checked, our reality changed. Because the Miz is by, coming soon. By one individual named Mike the Miz. Michael Mizanian is here to play. But there was a price to pay. Because we'll get him soon enough. Was he on Raw or no? No, he's just he's just a uh, tough enough boy. I think he was on like a couple of years ago. but Nah, bro, he was on MTV. Is this before or after he got banned from the locker room? I think this is before. right around. I think this is right around this the time. Is, no, this is before because no, this is this is when uh, an unnamed wrestler decides to be an asshole to him and then does an unspeakable criminal act Michael, later. Michael Mizanian or whatever is he is about to have an unfortunate accident. But... He's about to get his reality checked. <laughs> Somebody's reality will be getting checked in the next year or so. Maybe the Miz. Sure. Maybe the Miz is the cause of things to come. Who knows? Speaking of checks and balances, we got JBL coming to the ring. He's got his hands Fresh taped off up. Penis surgery because yeah. he's got a. And yep. then you just see the big schlong out of his pants. <laughs> after yep. JBL comes comes out after being gone for two weeks following successful jerk off surgery. JBL yep. comes down to the ring and he, without she Jillian. He did come down. He said, "He said Jillian, I don't want you." 
You got a match later. You got to focus. He didn't actually say that. The penis surgery did a lot to him. In the meantime, he can't have Jillian around anymore. JBL is ripping on health insurance. Actually, loving the fans. He says, "I love the fans for their support on the successful penis surgery." Yeah. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for all the love and emails. As he says it, but he has one person he wants to confront. Because you know what? He had an issue after getting that penis surgery. He said, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I didn't... So, I've seen the video of what he... Like, the beer drinking contest. I didn't think, like, that this was the setup for that. Oh, yeah. We'll get there. We'll get to that. This is how we get there. He's like, Austin, I am Texas, buddy. I am the USA. How dare you not mention me as a best Texans in the business? The best Texas... Yeah, he's like, he's he, like, you're... obviously he's he's not cleared to to compete, but JBL being the All American Texas football player and, and and money mogul and whatnot challenges the Stone Cold Steve Austin to a beer drinking contest. You could have like at least like done something up your alley, like a clotheslining contest. Well, he's yeah, injured. he said, "I've seen yeah, you drink he's... beer, pal, and you're very shit at it. <clears throat> and I'm gonna out drink you at Saturday night's main event in Cobo Arena in Detroit, Michigan." And it's like, yep. why is he saying all that? He's being so yeah. super specific about where he wants to do this. And then he goes, "Chris yep. Wa, I I can't believe you broke my penis." And then then that was it. <clears throat> it was the flying headbutt to the cock and balls. He says, "Well, he no, he doesn't even mention him by name. He just says at the beginning and the end of the promo." I will defeat the individual who damaged my penis. Fair enough. Did he know? Did he know? Did he know? He did. He did. We've talked about this. JBL did know. To our patrons in the $5 tier, you know what we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you do. (laughs) Maybe you don't. Maybe you subscribe to the Patreon to find out. Mm -hmm. We go buy merch and we include the... (laughs) <laughs> if you if you buy, buy merch and show proof proof of purchase, I will personally email you the episode in question, uncut. And I'll say thank you very All much. Four hours. <laughs> and I will I will also personally forward you an email of my of a picture of my Xbox 360. Yeah. With with the Halo Reach logo and uh, George <laughs> from Halo Reach on it. Yep. <laughs> what he said. Taz um, agrees. That with Cole, that JBL needs to stay focused, but he says he's gonna get his ass kicked in the beer drinking contest. Oh, he's gonna get fucking wiped in the beer drinking contest. It's stone cold, and he and JBL's down one penis. How could he hope to compete? He can't hold two beers. Oh, I have um, I have in my notes here. MJF steals this line from JBL because JBL says I'm better than you. Oh my, Did and MJF like, no. It's like the way MJF says it, where he's like. I'm, I'm better than, than you. you. Now, now I need you all to pause okay. and consider the converse. Oh no! Another precursor. The next chapter in the converse. Listen, yep. since last week, you've been nothing but just talking about this fucking bit. I'm sick to death. <laughs> it's not of a hearing... bit. I, listen, I, I've been getting texts from you like every morning since last week, saying the converse is coming. <laughs> the the cork board is up, and I'm I'm drawing lines. And you, everyone needs to know it. it. It is worrying. I see you pacing outside of my house, yelling about CM Punk. <laughs> it's coming, Joe. He it's says. happening. It's I happening. Believe it. Just wait. I you don't guys, even... <laughs> you can call me crazy all you want. Speaking of coming, some dude comes into uh, Teddy's office backstage. I genuinely put some dude because I forgot this it's, was... That's uh, our Cruiserweight was... champion, dude. What I, the hell? No, yeah. Who the fuck is this guy? It's the it's, hurricane, it's, bro. It's Gregory Helms. Gregory Helms and his nose is busted. His ginormous nose. <laughs> He's like, like... He broke, bro. He said, Teddy, Teddy, I broke my nose. He broke <laughs> his nose in Australia. And Teddy's like, you know what? I feel bad for always making you defend the Cruiserweight title every week because everyone hates you, but... Listen, I'll make it up to you. You're going to fight Chris Benoit, the U.S. champion. He's like, oh, what the hell, Teddy? Do, 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 do. Teddy, what? Mm. Oh, Teddy. Teddy, my nose. Teddy, Teddy my nose. Da, and, da, and then they're da, like, well, speaking da, of the house da. show, look at We're in Australia, New Zealand. Yeah, well, we got we got the highlight reel of how Gregory Helms broke his nose. Yeah, they showed yeah, a full detail. Yep. 
We got a highlight. They kept of replaying it. Really wanted to fuck Bobby Lashley. Oh yeah, dude, you were on the beach and he was getting his fucking he was getting cat called to hell by that chick. She was like, "Let's go, years. man. Like, oh, let's flex. Oh, All right, now take off your shirt. Let's see what you got, buddy." I was like, "Oh my." So. Yeah. St- Coming from they, this, they do it different down under. Doing a road to WrestleMania bit, like going around the world, this was the most tame thing I've ever seen in my life because I've been flash banged the hell with Valvina saying hello Filipinos, no, <laughs> hello Filipinos, <laughs> and then when uh, SmackDown went to Japan and Rey Mysterio was yelling at that man to say <laughs> West Side. like say this was West, the- West Side, West Side, and he got fucking Japanese Joey Mercury. <laughs> That was, I like, was it? That was like, I'm in Akibara. I'm, I'm in, that's Ray Mysterio. I'm in Akibara. <laughs> I'm buying Hatsune Miku merchandise. Oh, and when they were in the Philippines, fucking John Cena was like in like a hotel room with the Philippine flag just in the background. <laughs> and it was just like. Did you know he speaks fluent right? Filipino? There's no way. I believe he does. That. Look it up. How many languages does that man speak? 20. 20? 20. I don't know that. I'm making that number up. I believe that. Yo, who else speaks 20 languages? William Regal, as he comes out to the ring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> William Regal gets in the ring and he says, Paul Birchall is a dumbass and ugly. He's a Please phony. Don't laugh at him. He's a phony, pathetic, ungrateful ant, and I'm going to make an absolute fool out of him. He's a fake buccaneer. He's a scallywag. And then his fucking treasure hunting music hits, and Paul Birchall. It was up so on the fucking the sick. <laughs> it was tight. Oh, I love down off the rope. It wasn't oh, even wow. that. No, like he, they like like cut him like, or they showed him from the side, and he like looks back at the camera, gives a little wink and a kiss, and he then he fucking in swings rope, in right? on the rope. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. this is so good. And then he pulls out a sword. Yeah, he got the cutlass, and William Regal's laughing at him before that, and he pulls out the sword. He's like, oh shit, oh god. I think Paul Burchill looks awesome as this gimmick. And you know, it's funny because I remember this guy being in like SmackDown vs. Raw 07. And like, who the fuck is the pirate? Yeah, I think to be fair, the audience probably also said that too because they did not care at all about this. The best part of this match was the inverted full Nelson because it looked yes, so Yes, that was so weird. And then uh, Cole's like, that's a unique move. <laughs> and Taz's like, I've never seen that before. <laughs> yeah. Is that at the end when Taz calls it? He Because... Paul Virchel at the end of this match does something, and Taz is like, that's like a Uranagi rock bottom. And I'm like, what the No, fuck that's is- the C4. Okay. Uh, I mean, the only really thing I haven't noticed is that Regal did like a really nasty running knee drop on the apron. He and- basically did a, a Spanish. His finisher was basically just a Spanish fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah also- standing Spanish fly. Yeah. Uh, well, they were so confused by it, though. Like, Taz well, it's never like, done it before. Oh, oh my God, he... He flipped or something. That's like so. That's like so sick. As like Paul Birchall, like good for you. You just baffled everyone with this terrible. Gimmick. He was uh, He was way ahead of his time for that. Like pulling out fucking C four like that. Standing Spanish fly. Yeah. I don't know if you guys saw it or not. Uh, Paul also fucking smacks the shit out of William Regal's balls. I really? didn't see that. No. <laughs> he actually like smacks his balls. Like, pretty hard. Uh, that's, it, that's fucked. I think. They later call that move walking the plank, which that's fucking rad. The Uranagi rock bottom? Yeah. Yeah. It's walking the plank. Oh, that's sick. Um, I don't what Taz called it. All in all, it was like a pretty disappointing debut because William Regal killed that man for three minutes yeah. of the four minute match. Also, we didn't yeah. even talk about match links last episode, but that's that's fine. That's no big deal. On power. That's no big deal. But yeah, no, it was like four minute match, and uh, yeah, Virgil didn't really do anything till the C four. <laughs> all my notes were on Regal doing some weird st- stuff. The yeah, I was fine. With that. Regal was very disgusted in his former protege becoming a a, a pirate guy. But yeah. he just he just doesn't get it. He didn't he didn't game plan or uh, scheme out the the standing Spanish fly though because no one's done that. <laughs> yet. Somebody needs to uh, get William Regal to watch One Piece so he understands what it means to be a pirate. Fair enough. What's the One Piece. What's Paul Virgil's pirate way? We got what's his Nendo. What's his Nendo? <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, Joe. Booker Diva. D or Tarbell. No, dude. 
Divas uncovered is later, dude. <laughs> no, we have we have letters to talk about first. That's right. Well, no, that doesn't happen yet. Or all does it? I don't know. The letters oh, happen doesn't... first, and then it's then it's Charmel time. Booker T. not Charmel. Work, and then he gets scared by a worker. They're, yeah. yeah, they're very scared of the war criminal known as the Boogeyman appearing before them. Well, the NAACP is also scared of the Boogeyman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. Well, Booker Booker T. and Charmel. Charmel comes out with a huge duffel bag filled with uh, mail. <laughs> And Booker T says he's been getting a lot of fan mail uh, saying that uh, the Te- Theodore Long needs to do something about the boogeyman and just starts rattling off these letters. He's like, oh, yeah. Oh, uh, I got it right here. I got it in full if you yeah, want me yeah. to read it. Yeah, so he goes, Please. he is a bad role model for the mono- minority children. And Who then, is that from? That was from the, the leader of the WCP. Okay. Yeah. He is rolling back all the gays we made in the civil rights movement. And yeah, Taz then, goes. Gays? Very, hold on, because it was a very long, pregnant moment, and then Taz goes, "The gays." <laughs> Cole goes. I think he meant Cole, gains. Another pregnant moment passes, and Michael Cole says, "Gains." Gains. It's like very like quiet too, because like Booker like stops after saying it, and you just hear Taz go, "Gays." Gays. No, gains. <laughs> gains. God, why would the boogeyman do that to the gays? Why would they preserve that on the network? They have the power to fix that. <laughs> Even they had the power to edit to... this twenty years ago. I know. Even Peta says that boogeyman is cruel to the worms, yeah. and the worms have feelings too. And even yeah, don't forget the third one. And worm even the digest. and even editor of Worm nutrition. Digest says that they have to stop the boogeyman. He has to be stopped. I put they don't know what to do with Booker here, man. And then, they like they got done with the Benoit feud and said, "We don't know." We have another letter from the President's Council on Health and Fitness, which says that eating worms is unhealthy. Thanks, George Bush. Teddy Long. Wow, what do you mean eating a chicken breast has more protein than a handful of worms? <laughs> Teddy Long shows up at the beginning of the show. That might not be true, Joe. Really? I don't know. Patreons, you know what to do: <laughs> subscribe, top tier. One of us on one of the shows will eat a handful of worms. No, no. We'll eat a handful of worms. And we will all eat chicken breast. We will measure the macros of an earthworm. Yeah. (laughs) Only on Patreon, though. Only on Patreon. If you buy buy merch and send a receipt, though, I'll I'll email you a picture of my gains. (laughs) Redbubble.com slash you have to wear this. Check the description. It's letter U, have, letter uh, number two wear this if you don't know how to spell which i'm assuming you don't target audience you know all that wrestling fans and just look, do your best we know that smackdown was taken off fox because you specifically don't buy things yep but buy this yep, yeah buy this, buy this. You have look to up smack it. up on redbubble we're the top aggregate mm-hmm. we know where it's at we know the money moves we built the seo optimization perfectly we built it so well that Teddy Long didn't even want to come out to the ring. Because he was sitting in the back going, Booker, you're going to have to deal with this at Sunday night's main, uh, Saturday night's main event. And Booker's like, are you, God damn it, are you fucking kidding me? I'm th- yeah, and Booker starts out. whipping around the letters, bro. And starts then starts throwing them all over. And then, Mail. and then smoking is a hazard. And it's coming out of the fucking duffel bag. He's like, ah, shit. And then the worms are fucking everywhere. And he runs away, leaving Charmel in the ring. <laughs> yeah. He runs back. He up did the a ramp. JBL, leaving his wife to the the Eldritch smoke. The Eldritch predator. Yeah. He said, "No, I'm not. You, you're dealing with this sucker." Again, when will Mark Henry step in? Mark Never. Henry could have said something. One one day it will be him. I have one thing to talk about about the next segment, just real quick, and that's all the Ed, raw rebound. Am I right? Raw sleep. Are you talking about the the Sean the, Michaels oh. drinking the water and it goes Stephanie slurp slurp slurp? Sean Michaels. No, no, I don't even care about that because that's stupid raw. But they they zoomed in on uh, Sean's face as he slurped the water bottle, and went, <laughs> like he's that's a Minecraft cool. character. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but well, yeah. a real SmackDown fans skipped all that raw bullshit and got yeah. to be Stone Cold apparently inducting Bret Hart into. The Hall of Fame. Why? Because yeah, it had a good, cool match. good match. It would have been All really right. cool to the show the, that uh, WrestleMania recap from last week instead of Undertaker Sid. <laughs> but oh. happens. Yeah. Chavo, Ray, and Benoit will induct Eddie. 
They said uh, his old... nephew Chris Benoit on commentary. Yeah, he does. <laughs> his real nephew. They're like they're like Travel Guerrero and his nephew Chris Benoit and <laughs> Rey Mysterio. Hulk Hogan will induct Mean Gene. Yep. And a new inductee is going to be Sherry Martel. In that, very, very good. And then we follow it up with one of the most sexist segments SmackDown has seen yet. This is the greatest thing I've ever seen on SmackDown. It's so tone deaf. It's so amazing. It's something truly only Vince could have come up with. So we had a bra and panties gauntlet match on Raw earlier in the year. And this one, they tried to say this wasn't a bra and panties match. But it was. It's a Divas uncensored match. Yeah, bro. Listen, if you if you're like Divas uncovered, uncovered. Oh my bad. Of like Ten to like eighteen, and you never watched like WWE during this time period. Women's matches back then were not what they are today. No. I never. The women watched. were not considered people in wrestling. You weren't considered wrestlers. You weren't a real. You weren't a real worker, bro. They just Although, told you go out there and look hot. One of the good matches of the year was on New Year's Revolution. It was Mickey versus Trish. That was really good. Yeah, both that was a good of match. them were were like both of them were like standout like wrestlers. Yeah, that were also like beautiful in their time. And yeah, I think Dave, I think Meltzer gave it a negative two stars. And I'm like, what? What? Meltzer also hates women. Let it be known. Yeah. So, that's why Tony Khan loves David Meltzer. Yeah. Real. I I never watched like WWE growing up, but I knew about this stuff. That's like how how out there it was. The broad panties match. It was the best part of every game, huh? It was. <laughs> but yeah, Jillian uh, comes out. Apparently, I think Cole says she was inspired by Sherry Martel. I don't believe that. <laughs> I Not have for a minute. I have a task quote for you guys. He goes, "Hey Cole, you ever been called a bimbo?" <laughs> And the, Michael Cole just ignores yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> He's so real for that. This is why Taz eventually leaves the ECW. The fucking uh, TNA, I mean. Did he went to ECW too? <laughs> before that. Oh, before he went to TNA? Yeah. I believe it. Um, so, yeah, the women strip, the match happens. Crystal wins, well, by the way. Or, well, hold on, hold on. SmackDown is brought to you by AutoZone. K-Swiss, and by PS2. K-Swiss is crazy. K-Swiss is so good. Holy yeah, did you guys have a pair of K-Swiss in your life? Yes. I had some. Yeah. That was elementary school. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. I, I remember buying some at like a Marshalls with my mom. Holy nice. shit. But, uh, Crystal comes out here respectfully. She, she really runs down to the ring. She doesn't like waste a second. Like Jillian like, like, like strutted down to the ring. Uh, Crystal may as well have like full on sprinted to the ultimate ring. warrior style, bro. Yeah, yeah. Well, she she needs to protect her her honor legacy, whatever. Something happens in this match. Um, yeah, clothes come off, and then the match ends, and Crystal wins. She and then Crystal the takes the rest of her clothes off. Yeah, and for the, she did it for the love of the game. It's a, the tradition of the brown panties match. The winner also strips. There's a 2006 man pogging really hard when Crystal <laughs> takes her skirt off, and he's recording it uh, with his fucking 2006 flip phone. I gotta say, <laughs> sir, if you're out there and you're listening, send that to us. Yeah, get, the, get us. that into us. Our PO box, our email, our Redbubble. I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you some merch personally. If you're within the ages of 10 to 18, I need you to remember the <laughs> iPhone had not come out yet. Yeah, they had flip phones and maybe digital cameras. So that's why this man is pogging really hard with his 2006 flip phone. They didn't even have the sidekick yet. Speaking of people that are pogging out hard, Batista met his idol at the Arnold <laughs> class. <laughs> Let's go. I yeah, mentioned this last week that Batista would be in Chicago for this. Oh, no. At Cleveland. Cleveland. Was it Cleveland? That's, yeah. the, that's the Chicago of Ohio, though, so... He's close. Yeah, both suck, essentially. Bro, putting Cleveland and Chicago on the same plane is a little fucked up of you. It is. At least Chicago has good pizza. Yeah. Did anyone ever get a Cleveland pizza? They're in the ER the next day? Yeah, no, buddy, that's a that's a Cleveland sex pizza. thing. You keep me out of it. <laughs> a Cleveland pizza, huh? Yeah, it's just chili on top, and you go, bruh. No. <laughs> oh, come 
Uh, listen, can somebody, or... can somebody, can listen. somebody please help me? Right, whatever, listen. No, hold All right, back. me back. <laughs> what? Chris Benoit and Gregory Helms. It's a nine title match. <laughs> and Helms is, is just running away. Uh, He's scared. Chris wanted to kill them, man. Benoit gives, <laughs> as Gregory Helms is walking into like the ring, it, it zooms into Benoit giving this big ass smile, and I said, "Oh man, rip this fucking guy." The match was pretty whatever. Uh, no, but like it starts with Chris Benoit grabbing his broken nose, bro. Come on. Yeah, he hit a little oh, neener neener, and then he hit him with a, "I got your nose, I got your nose." And Gregory's like, "Please give me my nose back, dude." He grips that shit like hard. That was that was a shoot, brother. That was vengeance right there for something. Chris has some nasty he lethal chops. Yeah, dragon screw into a sharpshooter. Completely unnecessary to do to Gregory Holmes. Like <laughs> you're just having fun in your like uh, your exhibition mode in WWE 2006. Yeah, and Gre- Gregory Helms gets up and goes, "I'm done with this match." And then uh, <laughs> then the whole cruiserweight division is like, "Hey, hey, hey, get back in there!" He's like, "Oh, oh what the hell?" Yeah, they're throwing back in. Uh, Benoit hits him with a snap suplex, and then a flying headbutt. And then the, the crossface to his broken ass nose. Didn't have to hit him with the three piece combo like that. And you know that was that was the end of it. Yeah. Cole, Why did they do this to Gregory Holmes? Cole says, "Uh, Chris Benoit sacrificed his body again," and I said that that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? Yeah. And then uh, Naram's oh. eyes peaked at the next segment. <laughs> oh my. god. God, all right, yeah, so... Take it away, Nair. My moment is the fucking brawl for all. Have you, if, if you don't have know you seen what that? this is... I know what this is. Okay. I watched the brawl for, like, not all the brawl for all, but I watched parts of it, and I watched the uh, the dark side of the ring. Oh, yeah, okay. And this... It, they show Butterbean just fucking murdering Bard Gun. Oh, it's fucking brutal! Is, that 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 punch was a shotgun blast. I'm not even convinced oh that was actually a punch. God. He clocked his ass, and there was that was a, such an unfair fight. He they didn't even have it. his hands up. In the the big time moment here, they showed it like four times too. Just Butterbean just punching this man's like into another galaxy. Essentially, yes. I was like, why would you show this? Bark Gun, yeah, Bark mean, Gun wakes should... up in the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> You should that check one. that out if you haven't. It's really good. We need. A I don't know why they decided shoot fighting was necessary, but they did. So it wasn't that like a Vince Russo thing? It was Vince Russo. Antonio, Antonio Inoki is smiling somewhere. Vince Russo <laughs> hated uh, Bradshaw because he thought he was a cocky bastard, so he thought he would get one up on him by making this tournament. And then <laughs> Bradshaw won like three matches and made it to the finals. <laughs> you know, you could have literally just had JBL get his ass beat by literally anyone in a match, in a regular match. You didn't have to do this. Listen, Vince Russo doesn't really think that far ahead, man. No. You could have just see you could just could have had Steve Steve Blackman embarrass him again. <laughs> I think he also wanted to have Doctor Death become like a huge star and he gets knocked out and or he gets injured in like the second <laughs> match. Yeah, they, they exposed him and they ruined his career in the WWE forever. Or in the state side I should say. Yep. He was huge in Japan at the time. Do you want to tell just me? A lot of, that's a tough scene. Naram, do you want to tell me about Bart Gunn's like fantasy after waking up in the Playboy Mansion? Oh my god! Fuck. Yeah. So like immediately after this horrifying scene of a real <laughs> man killing fucking poor Bart Gunn, um, a real life man jump. being knocked out. Yeah. <laughs> we jump to Candace Michelle's uh, Playboy plug. Ooh. And. She's talk, oh, man. Okay, she's like, oh, I'm- <laughs> this is such a great moment. It's such a classy it's- magazine, and then this the fucking creepy old white guy is like, yeah, she's hot. I Sexy. we saw that this, on Raw. <laughs> they play this shit every episode on fucking Raw, and I hate both of those old guys because the guy's like, it's oh yeah, she's great. She's all her curves and. She's very athletic and and she's cute too. Like, and dude, you know fuck what? Off. I don't disagree, but it's like, damn, dude. All right, you don't got to lay it on that thick. He laid it on all the way. Yeah, like we get it. Candace Michelle's very good looking, 
God damn, bro, chill out. <laughs> this is on TV. Q Hefner is. He's not a help. Family Guy, dude. He's not. He's not the Family Guy. <laughs> they, they listen. I don't know if female WWE superstars still do this. Uh, to all you Zoomers watching this or listening to this, like this was like a thing, like that they advertised on the show. I don't think a lot of WWE female superstars do this now, do they? Talk? And they no, they don't. And they they were they were full on nude. Yeah. This isn't like tasteful like lewds or anything. No, they're Straight up titties and veg out, bro. Yeah, sorry. So you're not seeing Becky Lynch in one of these. And and listen, I don't watch. Kansas they so they stopped after 2008. Listen, buy a shirt, provide proof of purchase. I'll send you links. Stop! No. <laughs> Hey, support us! Support us on Patreon. I will email you the link personally. No, yeah, no, this no. is also a feud. They're feuding. This is a, a feud built around whose Playboy shoot was better, uh, no. Candice Michelle oh, Tori or Wilson. Tori Wilson. Yep. So, I'll truly, both. truly a, a decrepit collection of stories being told by the World Wrestling. Yeah, uh, that, that filth sleaze company. bag Nico loves every minute. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Catching a stray. It's, Sorry, Nico. It's tasteful, Nico says. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, you didn't listen to what Candice Michelle said. She said it's a classy magazine. <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. hot. I will oh, take man. her at her word. I need and then a, an old white guy says she's hot. Speaking of disgusting, decrepit promos, we got an animal here. An old white man. An oh, animal. Lord. Animal decides to say some weird ass shit he like i am the best tag team wrestler of all time i won everything with tag teams but this is what happens that when drunk doesn't get his cool course light i used to be really cool with hawk but he became a drunk and partying all the time that man's been dead for three years and you're really gonna bring up his yeah. alcoholism very awesome. cool who wrote that i hope it was an animal because they were like pretty cool uh, he talks about Heidenreich being an even bigger screw up than his alcoholic dead friend, which is probably true. I don't yeah. know. I think and, that one's true and too. What that means is Matt Hardy's an even bigger joke than any of those two. No more tag team stuff from him. He's gonna finally be the singles guy he wanted to be. This is they did the same thing in WCW in two thousand. And it didn't work. And it didn't work because he looked just like a copycat Scott Steiner. Yep. And he wasn't good. Yeah. Scott Steiner. Right? No, it's okay because announcing the match for uh, next week, they have him in his new uh, <coughs> like match card uh, gif. Yeah. Is him wearing a WrestleMania 22 shirt. There it <laughs> is. Also real. He's back. He's coming out. <laughs> it's him. And he's not wearing face paint. We got yeah, it's, it's uh, main no. event time. No, Kurt at Angle. first we get another re re we a flashback of Lashley and Finley for some reason. They're having a lumberjack match well, next week. They announced the lumberjack. Yeah, which sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm sure it will be. I'm we'll see. Sure it probably might not be. We'll see. Now we get the main event. Yep, it's we got time for the main event. Kurt Angle and Rey Mysterio <laughs> versus Mark Henry and Randy Orton. Kurt Angle, when he comes out here, you know, he does the you suck thing. And then Randy, it, the camera points to Randy and Mark, and Randy's like, not me. It's not me. I don't suck. And he points to Mark Henry. He's like, no, he sucks. Yeah, like, this match was a lot of nothing. I didn't really care about this match. But one thing I could say that was awesome is just Kurt Angle. He just gives his all in every single match. I don't know why, but he needs to cool off a bit. <laughs> Because goddamn, he's brother, he's not stopping. It's crazy. We're in like peak wrestling god Kurt Angle here. It's very true. There's it's another moment. Randy, Randy goes to Mark Henry, and he says, "You feeling me, man? You feeling me?" I'm telling you, he's at the cookout, bro. <laughs> you feeling me? What was crazy though? At one point in the match, um, Randy um, uh, gets Ray. Um, hanging off the the second rope um, by his like shoulders and neck, and then Randy's like, "Get him, Mark! Get him!" And then Mark like does like a dive, to, uh, so that it, like impacts like Ray. It's, like I, seeing Mark Henry dive, yeah, the like through the Ray second Mysterio. rope, it's like was, trapped. It's just insane. I couldn't imagine I would have seen that tonight, but third angle. It's probably one of the best moments. 
Kurt reverses an RKO and gets the ankle lock in. It's a pretty fucking sick moment. Match ends when they bring in a table. I don't even remember them calling for the bell. They didn't. They didn't, but they said it just ended. But it it happened. There was a DQ. Uh, Randy sets uh, Angle up on the uh, the table, and Mark Henry jumps off the fucking top rope and splashes him through the table. Angle, yeah, you should he, not be taking that, my guy. <laughs> he like disintegrates him too. Yeah, like, <laughs> he's like gone, gone in the next in the next shot. He's like gone. Sorry, uh, man. He's he he needed that. He needed true. that to humble himself a little bit. <laughs> uh, no, he needed that to feel something. Randy Bro, Orange, the, Randy the Orange just taker matches weren't enough. It wasn't just Angle that disappeared. Uh, Randy Orton and Rey Mysterio just disintegrated. I don't know where they went. It was just gone. And then Mark Henry s- stood in the ring. I didn't even know the match was over yet because they didn't call the bell. And then the Undertaker gong hits. And Mark Henry turns straight blue, and he's sweating, and he just looks weird. He, I, yeah. I, I'll pull up a picture if I can. Please, Ty, editor Ty, do some damn work, you lazy bastard. Put up that blue Mark um, Henry right now. Editor Ty's going. Ah, ah. Here's what Undertaker says, and this is exactly like what he says. Mark Henry. Mark Henry. You, me. <laughs> WrestleMania. And the whole time he's saying that he's licking his lips. Mark Henry's licking his lips as he's doing it because he's getting the sweat off. Yeah, he's like rubbing his Mm. like Mm. face. Mark responding to the Undertaker's Genjutsu saying, yeah, you you better be ready to put me in a casket. You better be ready to put me in a casket. Mark Henry's Nindo is telling people that what if it was him? I think, (laughs) Joe, no, you got it. This is exactly why, like, this is why Randy, Ray, and Angle disappeared. Undertaker has him in the Genjutsu. That's right. He's pulled him away from the reality. That's why they're not there. But Devari, but the Randy, the Randy, Randy Ray, guy. Kurt, and Davari are there. Yeah, Davari's also under the effect. Yeah, oh yeah. It's also making un- Mark Henry really sweaty. Yeah. It's not that he's just gassed from that match. <laughs> this this show this show in comparison to last week is just kind of kind of sad honestly it's just they had nothing to go with last week and made a really good show and now they're like we actually got stuff and we're cooking what but happened ironically, this show like went by faster and it, it's, this it wasn't a bad show at all still like it wasn't great but it wasn't there great was something happening yeah so. like we had a we had a good debut uh really cool finish with that, the main event was fine. It's just your typical. Oh yeah, also Joe, welcome Multi-man to SmackDown. Tag match. Welcome to SmackDown. Uh, most tag team uh, main events are a thing. Like tag team main events of teams thrown together by Teddy Long. Yes. Because of a segment. Yes. It's like an attitude era. You got spoiled event. last week by Sweet. having a world heavyweight title match. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, this so will that's, never that's happen not, again. That's not what I should expect. That's not the norm, but an outlier. No, 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 no. Yeah. But it's only going to get worse from here, buddy. I think we had the same main event two weeks ago, but they had it Finley and Bobby Lashley. No, Chris Benoit was there instead of Ray or something. I don't. It was a lot of just people. <laughs> I feel like I, I've seen I this will, match ten I will, times. Yes, well, I I should come to expect uh, tag team main events that end in DQ, main events that end in DQ. Um, They're setting up more storyline for the next pay per view, bro. It's not a big deal. Setting up storylines for a pay per view that they won't pull off, and they got to set up more storylines after multi man cruiserweight matches. Yeah, yeah, we haven't gotten that in a while. The tag uh, cruiserweight matches. The cruiserweight title is a joke. Disregard it completely. Yeah, I didn't sure. even know it was a thing until like the Royal Rumble. <laughs> like, legitimately, Michael Cole says, "Like, wow, this would really pr- plus up Gregory Holmes if he will beat Chris Benoit." Like, yeah, and Gregory he, Holmes looks like twice the size of Chris Benoit too. And on top of that, Greg, he's the champ. Like, he yeah. is a champion. He's supposed to be like he's done something, bro. Yeah, he, no, fucking Chris Benoit brutalized that poor. Man. He yeah. made him a joke, and thus the now the cruiserweight title also looks like a joke. And for some reason, all the cruiserweights hate the champion and want him to lose to everyone else, which means that the division doesn't give a fuck about their champion. It's very cool. It's no, very... they just don't like if I'm wrong. Is that the yeah, bit? Yeah, Cole, Cole and Taz kept saying that. 
Yeah, they kept. You guys would do the same thing. Time. You guys would do the same thing to raw down. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Granted, granted, you gotta, you gotta admit, right? Like Kurt Angle, another transplant, but we love Kurt. Well, that's Kurt, Kurt's power transcends brands. It does. He he transcends entire fucking networks of wrestling, bro. He exists. He's perks. Kurt Angle is the multiverse. It's all the perk thirties that he popped. Bro, enter the Perkiverse. Perkiverse? Oh, better than the Converse. Oh, my. Not the Converse, please. Not again. Buddy, you just wait. <laughs> give, it, give it a couple uh, months. Can I get a? This? Can I Randy get an Akira Orton video? Back to his original thing. Akira. CM Punk. Converse. To get his Leave team. me alone. Leave me alone. Converse. Ah! Punk. How do you guys feel about CM Punk politics Randy Orton out of his theme? Pretty tight, Balling, actually. Honestly, yeah. Randy didn't deserve that one. Are we ever going to do uh, Heat or Velocity before ECW arrives? Oh, that's right. The Heat and Velocity taping. Let's take a look and see what happens. All right. Wow. Five matches on the uh, <laughs> Velocity. Shit. Matt Hardy defeated Chuck Palumbo in a dark match. Bullshit. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Chuck. Uh, Super Crazy defeated Simon Dean. Sweet. Isn't that the, the Gemini guy? Yeah. Simon. Your manager. Okay. Gemini's gone from the company, brother. Damn. Uh, Kid Cash and Jamie Noble defeat Scotty Tuhati and Funaki. Uh, oh. Forgot Scotty Tuhati was in the company still. Uh, Tatanka defeated uh, Frankie Siasto. Frankie Chiazzo? Muniz. Frankie Chiazzo. Frankie He gave Chiazzo. Frankie Muniz CTE. Oh, my God. And then Eminem. Uh, defeated uh, Brian three. Kendrick of Paul London. You guys have been smacked up. You've been smacked up. Smack up. Mike Shiota. Oh, look at him. 